Well, John, this is the life, isn't it? Absolutely. Can't beat it. Some people might say, you know, your son's uh, one of the richest sportsmen on the planet. What are you doing stuck out in the middle of, a, in, of the countryside in an old 1950s caravan? The best things in life are free for me. You know, and I've got the biggest garden in the world. Look round you. Tyson's not even got a garden like that, has he? Hundreds of acres of land. I watch the sun rise and I watch it set. And that's millionaire's paradise for me. You know, I can cook my food on my fire, drink my tea at my kettle, like generations of people have done before me. And I'm going to keep doing it. Nothing in this world interests me of that side of it. Materialistic things don't interest me at all, as you can see. You know, people say there's great wealth in your family. Yes, my son, not me. And me as a gypsy, it's a cultural thing. You don't take off your kids, you give to them. And that's what I stand by. You know, I'm not a rich man, but I'm rich in other things. My son's who he is, number one on the planet. His name will be spoke about in folk law for hundreds of years. That's payment on its own for me. What did you make of the fight? I mean, for, for, the, for the, uh, the neutral, as they say, uh, it, was, it was one of the most exciting fights of, of all time. As the father of one of the participants, it must have been more than a little nervy for you. To be honest with you, you know, it wasn't a boxing match, was it? You know, because Tyson was very badly injured going into that fight. He had to have chromosome injections in both elbows. Both elbows was numb. He's since had an operation, a six hour all day in the hospital having it sorted out his elbows because I think he had some uh, bone spurs we had to get removed. Common thing in sportsmen, especially boxers. And um, yeah, he was handicapped from the beginning. But the boxing side of it, you know, he went out of the window because I knew he was going to be like that from the on. When I seen him, the look in his eye, he just wanted to destroy, seek and destroy. And that's what he did, you know, and believe me, exciting for the pain public. Probably one of the most exciting heavyweight fights you'll see. But boxing wise, he didn't do nothing. They trained, they probably they couldn't have trained for that, could they? <laughs> no, well, I mean, his training camp was disrupted anyway, of course, you know, baby yeah. Athena, you know, all the, 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 the the problems, thank God, that, that, you know, she came through that. I mean, it was a far from ideal preparation. To be honest with you, I think he only had about, what, four, three, three and a half weeks to train for it. He was in, when I was in old day hospital in Liverpool with him, he was at his lower, all low point. He couldn't be any lower. But to go from there four weeks later and do what he did, he's moving mountains, this man. And was he fit? No, not at all. And I wasn't going to say anything different. I was saying, yeah, you've had a good camp, son, you've done this, you've done that. I was trying to be positive, but in my mind, I knew the truth that he was only 50% of what he should be because he had too many problems. He had the COVID in July when it was first meant to take place. Then he got the, uh, the problems with his daughter. You can't get your head straight from that within weeks. And that's what he did. And to perform like he did. You know, and I could see it was ring rust 20 months out of the ring and he thought, yep, okay, to hell with a boxing. It's not going to work. I'm ring rusty. Let's have it. Let's have a war. And he stood toe to toe with him. And it was a thrilling affair. But it shortens careers, doesn't it? And with Tyson being an exemplary boxer like he is, it hurts me to see him get as much stick as that. And the right hand he took was it was a rookie move, wasn't it? He walked straight onto it. The old Tyson would not have done that. And at that rate, looking at that fight, Tyson don't need a trainer, does he? Well, because he's doing his own thing when he goes in there anyway. Because he couldn't have trained for that because that was a slugfest, wasn't it? Yeah, I think you're right because it struck me like at the, I think it was the press conference or the weigh-in. I've never seen him so angry as that. I mean, he normally plays the mind games, has a bit of a crack, but he was actually he had to apologise for his swearing afterwards. He was really he was wound up. up, wound up. And to be honest with you, he knew because he said to me afterwards, he said, "You knew what I knew." I said, "Yep," and it bothered me. He said, "I couldn't box, so I couldn't work my jab." He said, "If I'd have missed with a jab, the pain it would have put me in limp mode." He said, "I wouldn't be able to fight." He said, the pain when I was throwing the jab was unbearable. He said, I was fighting two people in there. I was fighting the pain in my own body and him. So he said, the only thing I do is get close and make a war of it. He said, I know I, I wanted to win more than him. He said, and uh, that was it. He said, seek and destroy or be destroyed. That was my motto, he said. He either gets me or I get him. He said, it all went out the wind after the, fifth, after the fourth round when I got the knockdown. He said, I looked up and thought, here we are again. Dogfight mode. This is where I've got to go. Trench warfare. And he was in there, and he's prepared to do that for as long as it took. And thank God that uh, he was the winner. Did you think Heart of Hearts, like, you know, certainly the second time he went down, this is it, he's not getting up this time? I always knew. Unless Tyson is not in his senses, he'll get up, Tyson. He's one of them. He'll never be defeated on that floor. He'll never, let, he'll never look up in his sense and let the referee count him out. Definitely not. 
because that's not the way of a warrior. You know, even me when I was fighting, I was nothing when I was boxing. I was on the front foot. If I got knocked out, I got knocked out. I wouldn't shy away. If I could have got up, I would have done. In my case, I couldn't get up yeah. because I wasn't physically fit enough to weather the storm like that. But Tyson is he's an athlete. He's a veteran of his job. He's a natural fighter. He's well experienced in the game. He's been down before. He knows what it's like to go down and get back up again. And Larry Holmes said it a lot of years ago. It takes a world-class fighter to climb up off the floor and win. And that's what he does. He always finds a way. Yeah, fair play. I mean, talk of weather in the storm. We've got a random storm coming here. Yeah, but, no, uh, it's all been like this. It won't rain. Don't worry about yeah, that. We shall battle through. Um, yeah, I mean, just coming back to the elbows, that was, I mean, fair play to Tyson as well. I mean, he could have made an excuse about He could have, he, well, a valid excuse. Could have got the fight put back again. But like you say, he's a warrior and he just... For me, it was, it was worrying for me, to be honest with you, because you know what? I said, you're pleasing other people at your own cost. I said, you're not physically ready for this. I said, nobody's going to blame me. You'll get a lot of flack. I said, but do it properly. He said, no. He said, we've been here before. This is where I'm at. I'm handicapped. I'm going to fight injured. We know that, he said, but I've still got to do it. I've still got to do this. He said, it's like people going over the top in the First World War. He said, they had to do it. I'm in the same position. I've got to do it. Because if I don't, he said, it's over for me anyway. You know, but what a man. I can only commend him. I sit here around his fire at night time and all I can think about is that fighting him, what he must have been going through, what mindset he was in. But I'd never seen a look in his eye like before. Do you see the look in his eyes yeah. when he come to the middle of the ring? You know, that, that look, I've never seen him like that before. Yeah. Was what like, was he seeing through them eyes though when he was looking at Wilder? I don't know, yeah, you're right. It was just like possessed almost, you know. It was like, you know, or, you know. It, his, eyes was, his eyes was twisting with venom and ill intentions. And I know, there we go, L's coming to breakfast here at some point. Although he's going to try and do what he can do, but when it don't work, he's going to switch. And he's going to do what he's going to do in here. But that's what he does. But it's not Tyson. Tyson's a slick boxer. You know, what I, what I would have done if I'd have been him, I'd have mixed a bit of slick boxing with that stuff. But he wasn't physically fit enough to do that. He hadn't had time to do it. And it's easy to stand there toe-to-toe -to -toe than move around boxing when you're not in proper condition, you know. But he sparred too many rounds for my liking. 10s and 12 rounds, should know better than that. You don't need that amount of sparring. It's like having two 12 round fights in one week. You don't need that amount of sparring. Even though you've got headgear on, on big gloves, you've still got gigantic men swinging away at you. You're still taking stick and it does take the edge off you. But I, I, sh I thought he should have knew that. I thought Sugar Hill should have knew that, but they didn't, you know, and that's is what it is, you know. But they've got away with it, haven't they? It worked for Tyson, but it's not how they've got away with it. Tyson's that damn good. And he's got this burning desire never to be defeated by another man if you never had that where would you go with it yeah where would you go with it well i saw again at the end of the fight that tyson was you know leaning over the ropes saying a prayer with shane next to him again never seen him as emotional as that it was almost like kind of the biggest win of his career i'm not saying it was the most important one but it was it was like it was so hard fought i'll tell you why he was emotional and all the family was emotional because they knew, like I knew, what he'd gone through on the build-up to it. He's done the impossible, you know, and even Tyson disbelieves himself. How have I done this? How have I pulled it off? You know, divine intervention. That's what Tyson thinks in his own mind because he knows one man on his, on his own is not powerful to do what he does. You know, I know he does it physically, but to be honest with you, it's out of this world what he does because a lot of people with these problems wouldn't even think about that. Three weeks later, when his daughter was dead, she flatlined for three minutes, it was over. He was shattered. I took him before the problem on a run in Liverpool. His lungs were on fire. He said, I've just done that. It was three miles, it says, nearly killed me that. That was three weeks before that. You know, and I'm thinking to myself, as a dad, what do you do with you? You know, but I'm the father. We know that. But he will do as he's going to do anyway, regardless of what I say. And they all have that way of mindset. Even Tommy he'll do what he's going to do anyway. You know, and like the rest of the boys, all I can do is give me opinion. But if I'd have had my way, it would have never took place. But if he wants to carry on boxing, he's got to box, he's got to fight different than that. Yeah. Well, he's going to have a short career. I suppose as well, as you say, he was kind of forced into that. Because forced the, into it. Yeah. Forced into it. His back was against the wall. He said, what do I do? Look bad. He said, a lot of people depending on me. My fans. I said, those real fans, do they care about you? If they cared about you, they wouldn't want you to do this. But he said, 
he wears his heart on his sleeve, Tyson. And he gets that thing in his head where you know what, what's going to be is going to be. I can only do the best I can, I'm going to do it anyway. That's why I was trying to be positive all the time, saying he's had a good camp, he's been sensible, he's done this, that and the other. I'm trying to give him drive as a father. But if I'd have been negative right the way down the pipe and said, don't do it, son, you're not ready, son. You've got a million problems. You're not right, this and that's wrong, it's all wrong. I'd have put him down and he's going to do it anyway. Yeah. And when you know a man's going to war, even though we know it's not right in your own head, you're going to try and give him some courage and confidence, aren't you? Yeah, of course. And I... as a father, I think I'm good at that. Oh. But he knew what I was thinking. You know, it's nerve-wracking for me because you just don't know the outcome of things like that when you're not proper fit. And that punch would have sort of knocked down, wouldn't it? Yeah. His I... full body quivered like a jelly on a plate. No, I did say that any other fighter in the world, I think, <laughs> that's, that's, that's wilder. It's all over in four. I think that's the hardest he's been hitting his full career. It was even harder than when he got knocked down in the first fight. Because them punches there, what he took in that third fight, they stay with you. They stay with you, them. And it was in the Haley on the fight, fourth round. And now he only got to round 11, and this, he, he, he stoked his fire up, but then he was ready for a 20-rounder, wasn't he? Yeah. He was going nowhere, Tyson. And I think Wilder, uh, to his credit, I mean, he, he gave it all in those first five, six rounds, and then he, he, was, he was gassed after that, wasn't he, I think? He did. But he was fair play to me. He, he said he wanted to go out on his shield, and, that, and, and that's what he did. He went out on his shield this time. He'll have an headache for a, quite a while, I think, don't you? Yeah. But um, who was it now? Steve Cunningham a few years ago. Yeah, remember that. He'd done a 60... They used to do two-minute interviews, didn't they, in the back of the boxing mm. news and that. And they asked him a question. What was your hardest fight you've ever had? He said, without a doubt, Tyson Fury. He said, why? He said, it was like fighting two people in there. The strength of the man. The will to win. Yeah. You know, he's been down, he keeps getting back up. Unless he's counted out and he can't get up at all and he's out of his senses, this man's going to get to his feet every time, isn't he? But there's only so long he can keep doing that. And I know the fight game inside out. You can't keep going to the well like that. Because all of a sudden you fight one day and a jab will knock you over. Your punch resistance goes through sheer punishment. You know, but he, he has a good uh, uh, hard end rest now. And what he wants to do is up to him. I said, retire, you've done enough. He's won everything. He's got no more to prove. Yeah. You know, he's got millions and millions of pounds in the bank. He's secure for life. You know, there's more to life than get your brains rattled, isn't there? To please the public. You yeah. know, but he's his own man. He'll do what he's going to do. But for me, I'd like him to call it a draw now. You know, and there'll always be somebody, won't they? Like I said to him the other day, there's always going to be a Usyk. There's, and after him, there'll be somebody else and somebody else. You can't go on forever with it all. You know, and he's beat the best man of his era three times in a row. He's fought the most dangerous man on the planet three times and beat him three times. What more can he do? And we all know, even though we don't want to know, the public I'm on about, they think you will do this, you will do this. I'm telling you now, you will do nothing with a man like him. You know, but I know Tyson, he'll spend two months at home, he'll want the smell of that sweat and leather again, won't he? And he'll come out again. I think Tyson will be boxing while he's 40 year old, he can't help himself. He really can't. <coughs> it's what's in him. He's what yeah. they call a human pit bull terrier, isn't he? Without fighting in their life, they've got nothing. Yeah. You know, but like I say, you've got to have a bit of sense, haven't you, as well? So is your gut feeling that he'll come back? Maybe, I mean, if, say, he's got three fights left, what, what, I mean, you sick, Joshua. Joshua, what, what can you do with Joshua? Joshua's a beaten thing, isn't he? Come on, let's be honest about it. After watching them two men go to war, do you think Joshua will ever stand with any of them men? You know, I'll tell you now, none of them men will even fight Wilder. Yusek won't fight Wilder, too dangerous. Joshua will definitely not go down that road. You know, Dillian White's pulled out from Otto Wallin. You know why? Listen to what I said. He's thought, hang on a minute, John knows his stuff. I'm not fighting Wallin. I'm going to get turned over probably. I won't get my title shot then. You know, it takes them to listen to my videos. And he thinks to himself, because it's all on. And when he heard me talk about Wallin, because Wallen's a danger Dangerous, to anybody. Yeah, yeah. Of course he is. You know, and he thought, I'm not having, I'm not having that smoke. I'll wait. I'll wait. He's Unless not having that see what smoke, he's waiting for. He's, 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 waiting for, he's waiting for your boy, I think, isn't he? He's waiting for Tyson. Well, I don't, know, don't see what he's going to do with Tyson. If, if Povetkin chinned him, you know, and uh, on the second time he come back, the Povetkin fight, when he fought Dillian White again, he just rolled up for the money, Povetkin. He didn't look like he'd, he was a threat to anybody, did he? He looked an old man overnight, Povetkin. Tyson is in a different league to these heavyweights. Different. But if you want to get a payday, be nice to him. 
say nice things about him and he might just give you a payday. But if you keep being horrible to him and trying to big yourself to be this, that and the other to make a fight, Tyson will go the other way. You give somebody else the opportunity. Dillian White, be nice to Tyson. You might you just be nice to him and start blowing smoke up his you-know-what and then you might get a shot, kid. <laughs> yeah, I spoke to Dillian White about Tyson about, to Tyson about two years ago and uh, said, Dillian White, he couldn't drop his granny. <laughs> It was joking, but yeah, I don't, I don't think Tyson... Listen, him. the man can fight Corsic. I'm not calling Dillian White. He's not in the class of my son. No. But neither is anybody else. Tyson's a country mile above everybody else. And Tyson ain't fit. He's beating the best men in the world without would not being fit. Yeah. <laughs> not fit. He got COVID-19. He had all them problems. Two elbows were useless. He couldn't even throw the jab. He couldn't even box properly. And he still couldn't do any good with an half-fit man. So imagine Tyson firing all four cylinders. No problems, no physical problems, no mental problems, on a good eight-week camp. I know what I, I know what I put my money on with anybody. I put Dillian White and all the rest of them in together with him. He could beat Dillian White and Usek on the same night, Tyson, with, with a proper camp. I'm mentally right. I put money on it. Cruiserweights don't beat gigantic six foot nine, twenty stone fighting machines, do they? They might think they can in their dreams. Nobody beats Tyson. I'm not saying it because of my son, but he keeps proving me right, don't he? Well, there is one job Tyson's got to do. That's train AJ. You he, he offered to train him, and AJ apparently yesterday has accepted. I don't know how, how, how true that, that. Right? Yeah, He said, yeah, if Tyson wants to come and help me, show me how to beat you sick, then... Isn't that nice? Yeah. Isn't that nice? <laughs> no, I'm not joking. That, that's heartwarming. Let me tell you, AJ, he's a sensible guy. He's a business guy. You know, he's not a fool. He knows where he went wrong. But I'm telling you now, AJ, all those guys in America, mate, can't help you. Tyson can help you. And why not keep it in Britain? And at the end of the day, who knows where it might take them. Tyson could train anybody and they'd be good. I watched him the other night. When he was up there, he was sparring up there, Isaac Lowe was sparring somebody else. He took an ordinary kid, an amateur kid, and for six rounds, the amateur kid looked like a world title challenger with the knowledge Tyson had in his mind. And the kid performed. He told the kid, punch perfect, how to deal with the stuff. And he was in the spa all the way. All the way. And the kid was basically there not to do anything. But he gave a good account of himself because Tyson was in his corner. So, yeah. But I think it's nice. British people should stick together. No matter what culture you're from, where you're from or anything. Stick together and help one another. You know? You know what they say, don't you? One man's an island, he's no good as an island. I'm an island, I'm not good am I, look here. Good for note. <laughs> but in his case, it'd be nice to unite and make England even greater, wouldn't it? Because I do believe AJ, with the right kind of people around him, can come back and win. I do. Because he's a big lad, he's got a good array of boxing skills, I've said it before. All he needs is that dog in his belly, that fire, and know how to fight. You've got to learn how to dogfight. That's yeah. what he's got to do. And those other guys, they can't learn him that. You talk about that fire in the belly, but I, I think part of that was put out in, the, in that defeat to Ruiz. You know, I think that sort of scared him a bit. Is that fair comment? I don't know. Fair comment or not. All fights are different, aren't they? Ruiz, one, Ruiz, two, totally different. He's shown he has a resilience to come back and win titles. You know, and everybody's being hard on everybody. You know, it's... Sometimes up to you, the fighter. Your trainer can only do so much for you. You go in there with a game plan. It's what you've trained for. Sometimes you can get it right on the night and sometimes you don't. But in AJ's case, if things don't go well, they just plummet. I can't get back on track, can he? And you've got to ask yourself why. But, it, but is that, you know, you mentioned all the guys he's been able to see in America. Is, is that at the, at the door of his trainer? Of McCracken? I'm not going to knock Robert McCracken. Because I know, looking at that fight, because I watched it again, Robert McCracken was trying to keep him on his feet. He was, he was giving, him the, giving him the advice to get to the 12th round and not get stopped. Because I think if AJ would have fought any other way, he would have got stopped. Usyk would have knocked him out. So it was just a, it was like a, a caution sort of thing. And happy to come second best. Because what can you do if your man's in that frame of mind? It's your job as a trainer to keep him on his feet. And whether he wins or not, 
It's a different matter. But Robert McCracken has saved his life, really, because he can come again. Can you imagine if Usyk would have counted him out? That would have been AJ finished for good, wouldn't it? So Robert McCracken, I think, he saved him for another day. He can come back from that defeat because it wasn't that bad. And why it wasn't that bad is down to Robert McCracken. You know, he's not a bad trainer, isn't Robert McCracken? But, like I say, does, it, does he teach dogfighting so, when yeah, he needs to? That's just it. I mean, do, do you think it's more in the head then with AJ? As in he's got the tools, he's got the... He's got the he's yeah, got it's the, mental. Million percent. You know, because with a strong mind, you can do anything. I was always told there's no such thing as can't. And when you think about it hard enough, there's not many things you can't do if you set your mind to it. And with a man that big, he can punch, he's got the right physique, you know, he's got all the, everything to be a good, great fighter. But all he needs to do is get the knowledge of what's missing. And that knowledge is learning how to go in trench warfare with your mind intact, with that belief in yourself right. I'm going to die here today, it's you or me. And without that mentality, you'll always spew it. You look for the back door every time without that mentality. And for my money, you know, he's not looking for the back door. He didn't look, he could have took the back door with Klitschko in the fifth round, he didn't. You know, yes, he got beat up by Ruiz, but he didn't take the back door, did he? He got stopped, he was out on his feet, he, that was it, he couldn't fight anymore. He didn't hit the canvas and stay down, did he? You know what I'm saying? He got up. So he's got something to work with, hasn't he? You know, and when you look at it in depth, he's got a lot you can work with. But you know, I, I'd have kept McCracken, me, because he's been with him all this time. You've got to show him loyalty. He's done the best he could for him. And obviously Robert McCracken had his best interest at heart, didn't he? But all he needs to do is get somebody there what can teach him different stuff and then combine it together, work together with it. Do what Robert does, do what this other so-called new guy can do if if they're out there i don't i don't think they're out there and you know maybe take a take tyson up on his, his offer and Listen, take a tyson can make him a different fighter yeah but still Tell not good now. enough to beat him still you not never good. know listen <laughs> hey listen <laughs> go back to the westerns you know <laughs> great gunfighters used to teach kids the kids come up and beat the gunfighter didn't they you know listen things happen boxing's a bizarre sport you know but i'd like to see him do well you know if he wants to take tyson up on it Good on him. I just want to ask about Tommy because I believe he's, he's he's gone out to the States. So this this fight is on. Yeah, it's on. But you know, until two men's in the ring facing each other, there's a lot to there's a lot of water to cover yet with that one. He's out there training, you know. But like I say, I'm not happy with the way they, these other people's performed. But Tommy knows he's up against a stack deck, but he should still beat Jake Paul at a canter. And if he can't, there's no way for no way in the boxing world for him. It's make or break for both men. But it'll hit Tommy harder because Tommy's supposed to be a professional boxer. You know, and like I say, Tommy will train hard. He'll do what he's got to do. But has Tommy got the skill to beat him? Yes. Has he got the power to knock him out? Yes. All it is with Tommy is young. Can he handle a big occasion on the night? You know, but I'm sure he's thought about it many times before. He's got the king of the ring in his corner. Tyson's going to be in his corner that night. I think Tyson's flying out in a few weeks to help him out. You know, because whatever desire he's missing, Tyson will put there. I'm sure of that. But am I confident he can beat Jake Paul? Of course I am. The only thing that can beat Tommy on that night is Tommy. His mindset. You know, but I'm happy with them other Jake Paul, no. You see what they are, aren't you? They're being awkward. You know, the contract's been bizarre anyway. If it was going to go through what they put in this contract, well, we'd be here all day. You know what I've said? Yes to everything. Yes, 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 yes. Do what you've got to do. Because I know Jake Paul can't beat Tommy, no matter what he does. Tyson will sort his head out, so I'm looking for a Tommy win in explosive fashion. End of Jake Paul. And then we'll move on to the brother, Logan. You know, but we won't count our chickens before they hatch. But yeah, boxing's a funny game. Again, anything can happen. But like I say, there's only one man beating Tommy, that's Tommy. Not Jake Paul.